that's what amps me up every single day. That's why I love what I do. That's why I've stuck with it for 15 years. It's, it's just that it's storytelling. Like I'm always interested in hearing other people's stories. That's what gets me fired up every single day. This episode is brought to you by Portfolio Box, an online portfolio made by creatives for creatives. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Hardwood Rod Podcast. In this episode, we're talking stories, specifically how to build a deeper connection with your audience via storytelling with filmmaker and brand strategist, Ju Charles. For almost 15 years, he's been helping purpose-driven entrepreneurs bring their stories to life through documentaries and video. In this episode, you're gonna learn the five factors for illustrating your story and making the mundane actually feel exciting for your audience. Jude is going to help cover all of this, plus the power of dramatic demonstration of proof, how to position your personal brand for undeniable credibility and trust, that and much more. Stay locked in. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Hardwood Rod Podcast. And today we're, we're diving into, uh, you know, storytelling a little bit here and you know, when it when it comes to you know telling a great story, sometimes we get lost in the details that really don't tell a good story, right? We we concentrate more on the ending and not more on the actual meat of what we're trying to create. My next guest, you know, he brings 15, 20 years of experience in this field and not just, you know, grabbing a camera and pointing at the subject, but telling a great story. Jude Charles, welcome to the podcast. Rodrigo, thank you for having me. It is a pleasure, and I always, um, I always get excited about geeking out and talking about storytelling. So, thank you for having me. Noah, uh, thanks for coming on. And as as people, right? You know, as anybody, you don't have to be a filmmaker, but you know, we all love stories, right? And you know, on a piece that you worked on that you know caught my attention, and it was a, a particular quote anybody can can, can relate to is. Uh, People learn through storytelling and metaphors, and that's just so true, right? We all, as kids, right, we still remember those Disney movies, right? It's because it has good storytelling, right? And it's to, simple to a T that somebody can understand. So, you know, before we dive into, you know, storytelling in a nutshell, right, tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. So I am a documentary filmmaker, and I got started... Um, in documentary filmmaking when I was 17 years old. I was in a TV production classroom in high school. And the teacher, Mrs. Donnelly, um, she, for one reason or another, took a liking to me and, and taught me everything that she knew about video production. And then on May 4th, 2006, she called me up to the front of her desk and she said, Jude, you know, you're really, really talented at this. I think you should start a business. And at the time, 17 years old, I'm the last of 10 children my mother was, uh, she worked at a chair factory. My dad was a construction worker. So there weren't any entrepreneurs in my family. I didn't know what it meant to be an entrepreneur or what it looked like to run a business. But the following day, May 5th, 2006, Mrs. Donnelly came into the classroom. She handed me a yellow envelope. And inside the yellow envelope was my first set of business cards. And that's nice. what got me started in this route of visual storytelling, um, and, and going down this route of like holding a video camera to tell other people's stories. Um, first five years, I failed in business because, again, I didn't know anything about what I was doing. But right. uh, I had a client, Keisha Dior, who I had been working with for a year, filming a documentary series on um, her building her business from the ground up. It was a cosmetic business. And in 12 months of her launching the documentary and launching the business, she made $1 million. That is mm -hmm. what led me down this very specific path of I only film documentaries for entrepreneurs. That's what I do each and every day. That's what I focused on in the last 10 years. Um, and that's how I've gotten to uh, sit here and talk with you today, Rodrigo. Awesome story. And uh, it's funny how, you know, obviously this this had a huge impact, right? You know, you getting those business cards, you you even remember the date, right? To the yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of reasons why I still remember it. Uh, one, it's because it's Cinco de Mayo, so it's easy to remember. But also, oh, okay. I is. still have the very first business card. Like, I didn't keep I didn't uh, keep all of them, but I, the, there's one that I kept. I signed it, and I signed the date because 
even back then I knew that this was special. Like what teacher hands you business cards? Like I didn't even tell her, Hey, yeah, I'm going to do it. She yeah. just was like, no, I really think you should do this. I'm not going to even let you tell me no. And, but it honestly, it was an impactful moment. Um, it gave me the courage to say, you know what? I can figure this out. Like if this is all I need to get started with business cards, which obviously you need more than that. But yeah, if, if this is all I need at the time, that's what I was thinking. If this is all I need, I'm going to get started. So yeah, it was, it was a very impactful moment. Yeah, you know, I bet, you know, I still have my, I think they're laying around somewhere, but when you get those, right, when you get those business cards, it feels like, okay, now I'm the real deal, right? But in, in reality, that's, you know, you're, you're in for a, for a long, long game. So, you know, you have this background, right? And you've dealt with, you know, these clients. I mean, I guess it, it would be like a documentary for these entrepreneurs, but it's more of a story and th- and them telling it right. You're not. There's no scripts involved. At least from what I understand, um, you're pretty much letting them pretty much tell their story. Talk to us about your process, right? As far as from talking to the client and then just beginning that stage, right? Of how you're going to conduct um, these, you know, docu series or just you know, stories in general. Yeah, I. The very first step in working with a client, um, the kind of clients I work with are seven and eight figure entrepreneurs. And what they're looking to do is tell their story in a way that they've never told it before. They've been successful at business, but there hasn't been a presentation of like the journey leading up to where they are today and what they're working on now to take it to the next level. So when a client comes to me, they're, they're, you know, the first step is what I call road mapping. And it's in road mapping that I figure out exactly who they are. Like I figure out their core values, what they're about, um, what they stand for, philosophies and beliefs. And then I take all that I've learned in that road mapping session. I spent eight hours with them. This is not, we're not filming at the time. But I take all that I learned in that session to then bring it to life through um, visual format, right? So I'll... Mm. I'll like if we think of when I was growing up, I um I used to watch uh, TV shows, uh, crime dramas with my dad. And one thing I loved about watching those crime dramas like uh, NYPD Blue or Nash Bridges or even for today's time, Law and Order, SVU. Mm-hmm. Um, what you'll notice is that d- the detective. At the beginning, you see someone committing a crime, but then a detective is going back in time to figure out why did this person do this crime? They're trying to find all the little pieces and clues of evidence that leads to, oh, that was the person that did it. That same kind of process is what I'm doing is when I'm filming with my client after the road mapping session, I'm looking to um, I'm, I'm looking for the truth. I'm looking to see like everything that they told me in road mapping, like they stand for integrity or they stand for wanting to empower other people. Is that really true? Like, can I see that for myself? Because when I'm filming with my client, I'm a fly on the wall. I'm not directing any of the scenes. So you got that part right. I'm not scripting. It's not directed at all. It's just me spending 12 hours a day, sometimes two to, uh, two weeks at a time, and just looking at, okay, what is it? Like, you told me this, but can I see it for myself in order to show it to your audience? Um, mm. that, is, that is the process, right? I, there's three phases to it. Dramatic, what I call dramatic clarity, which is road mapping dramatic demonstration which is the actual filming of it and then dramatic leverage now that we filmed it we put the stories together it's is this emotional dramatic story how do we make sure the right people see it at the right time so that you are able to continue to grow your business that's the whole entire process um three-step process that i look at it at. so you know when you know you know most people they get kind of they hate being in front of cameras right and sometimes you know seeing or saying something that like we've all been there right where we were saying something but do we really mean it right like we're just saying it just to say it yeah right yeah and you know sometimes you know we don't want to say the truth right we don't we, we don't want to say something because it might maybe you think it might harm your brand or your your business but um i feel like just as you know, you you and I are talking right now. I feel like if if we get that human aspect, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like we could understand each other even better. Yeah, I, I, it's you cannot tell a story without 
the vulnerable human aspect of what went wrong. There it is, right? That's the key word right there, vulnerable. Yeah. I. It, it's hard to tell a true authentic story without being vulnerable, without being open to the fact that we all know no one's perfect. So yeah. why try to polish it up and make it seem like you, you are perfect? That's just not, it's never going to connect with that person that you're, you know, wanting to work with, right? When, when someone says, why should I hire Rodrigo? Why should I hire Jude versus any other person that's available to me? What they're really asking is, what's your story? What are you about? And that, what are you about or what's your story that comes down to the, the vulnerable moments like I talk about with failing my first five years in business? Um, you know, the same day I got the, I, I found out that Keisha made $1 million is the same day I woke up at 7 a.m. to the sounds of chains hitting the floor outside. And when I woke up, looked outside to the chains hitting the floor, it was a tow truck driver coming to repossess my car for the second time in eight months. Mm. I don't hide from that story because that day, the car being repossessed and then finding out Keisha made a million dollars, without that day, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Because it was in that moment that I realized, wait, I have had the blueprint the whole time. Like Keisha just made $1 million and I've seen what she did for the last 12 months behind the scenes in her business. I wasn't doing the same thing. So clearly why she was able to make a million and why I was struggling to make 20,000. It's like, it's because of that. Right. Like, and so without those true authentic moments that really help us understand, like, what is Jude about? What is, what is Rodrigo about? Without it, you can't, it's just, there's no way to really connect. It's the same reason why, like, I'm sure you're, you're a, um, a sports fan. Uh, I recently rewatched Michael Jordan's The Last Dance. Oh, I love that. And there's moments in that documentary that we see Jordan in a new light that we've never seen him before. He's, I think he's 57 or 58 now. And in, in all those years, we've never seen Jordan in this way. Right. And so I think that is like, that's the real power of not only like how do you tell the right story, but that's the power of storytelling because then that helps you to connect with your audience on a deeper level. That's that's so true. And, you know, when you know, when I watched that that piece that you made um, for Stefan, I would say I related to him in the aspect where, um, you know, and we're talking about docuseries that you that you conducted. Um, uh, you guys could check it out on his website. Um, but it that that made that docuseries, that first part really reached out to me because it was where sometimes you know, we could do things and we just look out for ourselves. But in this case, I feel like Stefan was looking out for the client more than he was for himself. And Mm -hmm. I feel like when, when you talk in the, not the you, not you, not me, right. It's more about the client, right. Where, how can I help you? Right. How can I help you tell this story? Walk through us through that, through that mini doc series. And why did you create it in that, in the series, right? Rather than like a whole full documentary. Yeah. So I'll give more context about the Stefan uh, docuseries first, and then I'll, I'll talk more about serialized storytelling. Um, mm. Stefan George is a copywriter, right? He, um, he is wildly successful. Eight years ago, he was a door to door salesman. And then he ended up meeting his then, uh, she wasn't his wife at the time, but she's his wife now, but he met this girl at a poker table. Um, and she was a copywriter and she taught she taught him copywriting. And from that point, he went from being a door to door salesman, only making forty thousand dollars a year to now he makes eight figures um, as a copywriter and serial entrepreneur. Now, you hear that you hear the high level of what he's been able to do. If you want to follow him, that doesn't really connect you to that doesn't really it, it inspires you in some way, but it doesn't make you like really want to be a part of his world. And what I do in the docu series, as I start by the very first step, like I'm, I want to give you a three dimensional view into his world, but most importantly, we we touched on it a little bit. I want to make him a little bit more human. Gotcha. So that docu series opens up with him spending time with his daughter, and there's a magical scene that happens in the first sixty seconds. I encourage the listeners to go watch it. I won't ruin it, but the reason I started there with this moment with his daughter is to make him more human, but but also to just you know, to make you want to watch the rest by seeing how he relates parenthood 
to empowering other people, right? Like yeah. it's truly his core value. It's who he is. And copywriting itself is not sexy. Like saying, saying someone sit in front of the camera, I mean, sit in front of the computer and type is not sexy. It's not interesting, but it's the things that happens around him that makes him interesting. And so that's why I decided to start the story in that way. And then why serialized storytelling is because um, it's there's not enough time. So that I, I believe part one is 20 minutes long and there's not enough time to, could I have made it an hour long documentary? Sure. But when you get someone to go deeper into your world, right? People, mm-hmm. they want that. They want to go deeper and it's, it's, It's the reason why binge watching has become so popular. It's the reason why even podcast series have become popular. Like there is this thing that happens in your brain where you're listening to the story, you get wrapped up in the story and you're like, wait, what happens next? That's what I'm creating through these docu-series. Instead of doing one documentary, I'm taking someone further down their world where it's not just, okay, you're seeing him at home or you're seeing him do copywriting. Part two, um, I believe you're seeing, is part two is called... Gosh, I can't remember the name now. It's not pivot. Part three is pivot, where you're seeing him having to perspective, pivot from right? taking going from a live event perspective. There you go, perspective, where you yeah. get to understand how he thinks. Right, you get to understand why he makes the decision that he makes. Um, serialized storytelling series. It's it's all about just taking people further down the journey of getting to know who you are on a deeper level, and that's why I do series. Now. When you're making these, right, like you said, right, you wanted to create that opening, right, where it it made them more human. And right off the bat, you know, just those first couple minutes, I related to him, right, because, you know, I have a daughter as well. And boom, that's that's a connection. Right. And that's that's where Mm -hmm. a lot of people can relate. Right. And I feel like or I'll turn this into a question. What what's your thought on the first what is it? I, f- I forgot what's the, as far as the time frame, but as far as getting the audience attention, right? What's the, as far as their span, right? What's, what's, how do you gauge that, right? Is it the first five seconds? Is it the first a minute? You know, how do you gauge that, that opening, right? That hook? Yeah. For me, it's like, it's usually the first two minutes. And what I'm looking to build up in the first two minutes is why should you care to watch the rest of this documentary? Mm-hmm. Um, even though I'm doing serialized docu uh, documentaries, I still have to make you want to watch this one that you're sitting in front of. And the first two minutes, I'm looking at okay, what is based on the theme that we're going to go down? So part one is about mentorship. Based on that theme, what can I do to introduce you to this idea that Stefan is worth watching for 20 minutes? Because 20 minutes is a lot of time. It's not like it's it's a quick yeah. you know something that you could watch. You know, it, it's it's not short. What I'm looking to do is make you care, but I also create what I call the element of surprise to hook you in. Again, what happens in that first 60 seconds with Stefan and his daughter, you don't expect it to happen, (laughs) right? Especially with the way that he responds to what, what she's doing. You don't expect that. But the power of storytelling is that he, he relates that moment of parenthood and who he's, how he sees himself as a parent back to the work that he does every single day. And so um, it, it's it's perspective. It is being able to, more than anything, just draw someone into your world. Um, but we see it. It's not just hearing him talk about it. Because anybody can, like you said in the beginning, anybody can tell me something, but you're seeing it. Hearing something said 1,000 times is not as powerful as seeing it once for yourself. No, oh, yeah. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people would have probably cut that part, right, with the daughter, right, where maybe like, oh, maybe that's not what we want, right? Mm-hmm. And but you know, that's you know, it's it goes again, right, to that beginning where he was saying, where growing up, right, he was kind of that that nerdy kid that people thought that he just wanted to kind of fit in, right? Yeah. That that sense of vulnerability, right? Yeah. yeah. And we we all we all relate to that, right? And you know, talking about that portion and, you know, talking to him, even in, dur- during the, there's a clip where, where you, you, you go off where he's actually talking to you, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. like, but, t- talk to us about, about that part. Yeah, so I don't normally insert myself into the documentaries that I do, but there was this 
there was just this magical moment that he really got excited. So if you're if you're watching the docu series, one thing you'll notice is that normally Stefan's a really calm, collected kind of dude, right? Like he's he's just he's a little quirky, and and his friends talk about that. He's a little different, but there's this moment where I'm watching him create a course, and he's creating a course on storytelling, a digital course on storytelling. I'm mean, sorry, not storytelling on uh, copywriting. Yeah, and um. Literally, I'm just filming him, and he gets really excited. Right? He gets re- he's wa- he's reading this uh, yeah. forum, and he gets really excited. And I just really wanted to know, like, dude, like I've I've worked with you for a little bit, but I haven't seen you this excited. What got you so excited? Like, why does this amp you up? Um, the reason that I did that, though, the reason why I kept it in there is because honestly, as a viewer, you're thinking the same thing. What I'm doing is I'm just. I'm being the person, I'm acting as if the person, I'm the person that's watching this for the first time. Like, dude, you just got really excited and I don't understand yeah. it. Tell me, bring me into your mind, bring me into your world. Because if you bring me into your world and you bring me into your mind, that's how I'm going to understand you better. Like, let's take away the idea that this is an entrepreneur, but let's just say this is a person you've met for the very first time and you're really trying to get to know them and you're seeing like, is this somebody I want to be friends with? You're going to ask, like, when you're seeing them get really excited about something or really passionate about something, you're going to be like, wait, why? Are you, what's happened here? Why did you get really excited about that? It's the same thing that I'm doing in these documentaries. I'm, it's like what I said in the beginning. I'm searching for the truth. I've never seen you get this excited before. What happened here? Walk me through that. Um, and what you, so realize, what you realize is that he's, he's not just a copywriter that wants to make a lot of money. He's truly passionate about the work that he does. So... Is that all pretty much the power of dramatic demonstration of proof? Yeah. Is that what you- yeah. Dramatic demonstration of proof is how I came up with that is um, anybody can make a claim. Like I'm making a claim right now that I'm, I'm a great documentary filmmaker. Right. Or Rodrigo, you're a great podcast host. But how do you prove that? How do you right. take it from just you telling me a story to showing that story? Right. Because I said it earlier, hearing something said 1000 times is not as powerful as seeing it once. I, that's dramatic demonstration of proof. It's taking it from just an idea and a concept to step one, applying storytelling to it, and then step two, showing that happening in real life. That is what dramatic demonstration of proof is. There's five different dramatic demonstrations. There's behind the scenes, live illustration, social proof, transformation, and unique mechanism. You see all of that happen in each of the documentaries that I create. Um, you're seeing this element of behind the scenes with Stefan and his daughter, or you're seeing behind the scenes of him creating a course. You're seeing transformation through that moment where he's in the mastermind and he's teaching. Um, there's this moment at the end of that mastermind, at the end of that segment, this lady stands up and she's like, yeah, I got out of my own head and I was able to write a sales page in this one day sitting here with you. I was able to write a sales page and she had never been able to do that before. Right. That's so yeah. there's all these magical moments that's happening, but, Again, Stefan could sit with you. He could sit in front of a camera and just tell you all the great things about him. Instead, you get to experience it for yourself in an authentic way. And that's what dramatic demonstration of proof is. It's not just about doing it in video form, but even me sitting here and I'm bringing you behind the scenes of what it's like to film with, to, to create Stefan's story. Or I'm bringing you behind the scenes of the yellow envelope that Mrs. Donnelly gave me. Like You're able to see that in your mind as I'm talking about it, even though you're listening to me. That's what dramatic demonstration of proof is, is combining storytelling with the visual aspect of it so that you bring it to life for the person that's experiencing it. And it all, it all goes back to the roadmap aspect, right? Because you're, you're looking at you're looking at every single thing that pretty much you're, you're, you're doing the research. Right. And, you know, if let's say you're not satisfied with with what they're delivering, do you. Do you have to coach them, direct them? Like, what's what's your angle when, when that comes out, or something that you're not you're not seeing out of them that maybe he could be better? What's how do you how do you respond to that? Yeah, I guess you can call it coaching. I don't direct my clients necessarily, but I one thing you hear a lot of my clients say is that the, I challenge them based off of what they may tell me. Like, if, if Stefan says, you know, he like I remember when I sat down with him for road mapping, he didn't understand why he was doing what he was doing. But the more I challenged him and the more that I questioned him about like his upbringing, we went all the way back to the day he was from the day he was born to where he is now. Um, what you realize is that he had these moments where there were other mentors in his life, other teachers in his life that helped him get to where he is. And that's why he's so passionate about helping other people, because he knew he knows that 
without the help of his wife, without the help of a teacher back in middle school, without, you know, his dad even, he would not be where he is today. Um, so I don't necessarily coach them. I just really try to get them to see it for themselves. Like, I don't think you, I think you're discounting these moments in your life that happened. Let me backtrack for a second. What storytelling is like, his story has been convoluted and, um, confusing in the last five years. It's become a buzzword and everybody has a different way of teaching storytelling. Here's the very simple thing about storytelling. Storytelling is about a very specific moment in time. That's it. You're taking me through a beginning, middle, and end of a very specific moment in time. Now, of course, there has to be a point to you telling the story. Yeah. But it's just about a very specific moment in time. And what happens often with the clients that I work with is that they discount these specific moments in time that really help them get to where they are now or that helps create the frame of mind that they have right now. Right? Like when I talk about pivot with Stefan in part three, he we're showing how he has to pivot from having a live event to now there's coronavirus and he has to do a virtual event. Yeah. What does that look like? How does he think through that? What decisions does he make and why does he make those decisions? We're not just, you're not just seeing, you know, quick behind the scenes. You're hearing the stories that he's telling you and why he's thinking that way. He's taking you into very specific moments in time. And so, um, yeah, that's what I do with my clients. It's, it's, I, I coach them through telling the authentic truth of their story. I have a client in Delaware. She's a business coach. And talk about a vulnerable moment. She's on camera talking about her challenge with being a mother, her challenge of having kids because she hasn't been able to. She's 44 now or 45. And she wants to have children naturally. And she has not been able to get pregnant. They got pregnant the first time and had a miscarriage. The second time, it was uh, she did IVF, but it was a bad round of IV- IVF. But mm. she's telling this story, and she didn't want to. She didn't yeah. want to tell the world this story because it's vulnerable. It's 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 um, you're opening yourself up. You're being transparent. But yeah, and that's that, a lot. Of, a lot. A lot of people don't like to do that, and you know, I don't know. I feel like it's a, it's a, like a like a sign of weakness. I guess I don't know. Yeah, some people see it as a weakness, and that's why they don't want to do it, is they see it as a weakness. They see it as I'm opening myself up to criticism or I'm opening myself up to people, other people knowing more about me. The magical thing that happened is because of the way that I crafted the story, the magical thing that happened is um, she runs a mastermind, and there was a woman who decided to work with her. She had been on the edge of, like, not sure if she wanted to work with this business coach. After seeing that video and, and hearing the story, she immediately called her up and said, look, I just watched your video and I know I need to work with you. Right. Mm -hmm. That is because again, we're taking this, we're not just telling the story of her, you know, her infertility issues just for the sake of telling it. I'm tying it back to her philosophies and her vision of being a business coach and how it matters that look, yes, I'm going through this very hard time in my business, but how she responds, I'm sorry, I'm going through this very hard time in my personal life, but how she responds to that, Again, I don't want to give away too much because I do want people to go and watch these docuseries, but how she responds to it, what she does in response to this challenge that she's having in her life, you realize, wait, that's the person I need in my corner. That's the person I need helping me build a bigger business. It's it's a woman that understands that even though there's hard times, I have to have faith that this can still happen. I have to be able to push through, even though it's hard, it's emotional turmoil, really, I still have to be able to push through. And I think more than anything, like if if you're listening to this, what you should take away, like the only way you're going to build real trust to get people to hire you or to get people to be a part of your tribe, the only way you build real trust is to just be vulnerable, to be open and to share your story in an authentic way that allows them to get to know you on a better way. Hey, are you a photographer, designer, artist, architect, model, musician, or even a makeup artist? you got to check out Portfolio Box. With Portfolio Box, you're not forced to use any standard theme. You can use any style for any page and create a truly unique website that reflects you and your work. If you're a creative, it's a no-brainer. Get 50% off for 12 months on all plans with promo code ROD50. That's promo code ROD50. And check out PortfolioBox.net today. 
Wow. Yeah. So th- these clients, I mean, I feel like it's more of a, you're, it's, would you say it's more of a therapy session also <laughs> when, it, when, they're, when they're going in and, and talking with, you know, af- after my experience with Jude, you know, it's not only did, you know, did I, you know, get to A and B, but it was also uh, like, like a transformational like you yeah. know, session, right? No, like, I laugh. I laugh because the very first time a client told me that, I was just like, "Wait, I never thought of my work in that way." Um, but yeah, but I get a lot of clients that say that. It's like, especially after our interviews, they'll be like, "Man, that felt like a therapy session." Like, and and not only that, I, th- I think again, it, it goes back to them diminishing or undervaluing. I won't say diminishing, but undervaluing their stories. I think when they when I show them their story in a different light, let's look. Like, Let's take, for example, let's go all the way back. I never put this connection together, but as I'm thinking about it now, it's the same thing that Mrs. Donnelly did to me, where she handed me those first set of business cards. She took the story that I had in my head, like, no, I can't do this. I don't have anyone in my family that's doing this. I, my, you know, I don't even know what it means to be an entrepreneur. She took all of those ideas in my head and she just handed me a set of business cards to say, no, you need to look at this in a different way. I, the same thing that Ms. Donnelly did with me is what I'm doing with my clients because what, what often happens, I've had clients who have cried after watching the, doc, like when I show them the first look at the whole entire docuseries, yeah. they've cried because they're just like, one, I don't remember saying all those things. And two, it's like it, entrepreneurship is still challenging. And so when you hear yourself saying things that is empowering and motivating, you need yeah. that again in that moment. Um but yeah, I, I mean, think we're, 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 like we're, we're emotional beings, you know, yeah. I feel like, you know, if we get that emotion, right. I feel like it's, it's, you know, we have to let it out. Right. I don't think, I don't think it's, uh, someone told me that, you know, it's okay to cry. Right. It's, it's you have to, we have to cry. Yeah. It's, it's not, you know, cause if we don't, if we don't under, under, understand that process, right. We're never going to be as strong in whether, you know, you're crying or not. Right. But it's like, it, some people might think it's a sign of weakness, but you know, in reality, that brings more authenticity. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, if we go back to like the last dance with MJ, uh, Michael Jordan, there were moments in his story that really, there were emotional moments in his story that helped me see him in a different light. Like the one thing that sticks in my mind a lot is like that moment with his security guard who had uh, got diagnosed with cancer. Oh, cancer! Yeah, and he says like man, I just want to win this next game for him. Yeah, I felt that. I felt that one. You know, that that's just that's just a different... You see him in a different way after that. Because yeah. all the way up until that point, you keep hearing about his desire to win and how he was, like, almost bullying his, his teammates. Yeah. But, man, that just... That gives me another dimension. That takes me into the, a different part of his world, an emotional connection. Like, of course I want to see Jordan win at that point. Like even though we already know the outcome of this, cause this is a story that happened 20 years ago, but still like yeah. it, it just takes you that emotional connection. Like, I'm glad you actually brought that up. Cause that's really what this is about. It's about an emotional connection. And then what ends up happening as a result of that is you just want to, you want to see that person win. Yes. There's this vulnerable moment where his security guard is, you know, he's sick and Jordan still has to play the game, even though he wants to be there as much like this wasn't just his security guard at that point. This was like a father figure for him. Jordan had lost his father by the time his security guard got sick. And he yeah. talks about that. He talks about how, like, you know, after my dad died, like, he became my father figure. He was the guy that I called to talk to. That's just, it just opens you up in a different way. Like, yeah, he could, he could look at that and see it as any other person. He could think, like, a person is seeing him as being weak. But he could also just look at it as, like, no, this is who I am. And I want to show you who I am. So when, you know, we have the story, Jude. We have the story written up, right? Mm-hmm. Now, whether whether it's a good story or a bad story and we you know you could talk about that you know if you want to chime in but you know we have the story right how do we deliver it right and and to the right audience you know that's kind of like the the money question as well mm-hmm. yeah the so let's i want to break down okay how do you tell a good story versus a bad story i think of it in three different ways so first there's a the story which i mentioned is a very specific moment in time but then bringing me into the story, I want to know what are you thinking and feeling, right? Like, so for example, I go back to the Mrs. Donnelly story that, that she handed me the first set of business cards. What was I thinking and feeling when she told me I should be an entrepreneur? I was thinking like, I can't do that. Like, there's, right. I can't do that. Like I had insecurities. That was like, that. those are my feelings. But then 
The third part is what are you seeing? Because the seeing, even if you don't have visuals, like we all have visuals in our mind. We can like if I tell you there's a yellow ball, like you're immediately thinking of a yellow ball or a green ball, a tennis ball, like you see that in your mind. Um, that's the third part. That's the third layer. Like, what are you seeing? A good story has all of those three layers to it. It's a very specific moment that um, allows you to understand what the person's thinking and feeling that then also allows you to, to understand what they're seeing. But most importantly, the last two things, there's got to be conflict and there's got to be a reason you're telling me the story. Like I can't tell you a story just for the sake of telling it and you're, you're left with, oh, well, that was interesting, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, so there's that. There's those five things like just a moment in time. What are you thinking and feeling? What are you seeing? Tell me the conflict and then the the um, the point of you telling me the story. Oh, um, so that goes back. That's the five factors of illustration. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think that when we talk about a good story, a bad story, there's that. That's what makes it compelling. Now, how do you get it to the right person at the right time on the right platform? There's a lot of factors to that. I mentioned that Keisha Dior was able to make $1 million in 12 months through a documentary series. She only used Twitter at the time. She uploaded the video on YouTube, but the platform she used to get it out was Twitter. And on, on top of that, what she did was um, she did radio interviews. She tweeted each and every single day for a year, like making sure they were, when she was talking to her, her uh, customers that they understood, like, you need to watch this too so that you better understand what this is really about. Um, really, what I, why I call it dramatic leverage or, you know, when we talk about how do you share the story, it's really just about sharing it. What, what, what happens a lot of times with why we, we don't get the results that we're looking for is we're not spending enough time sharing the stories behind the things that we're doing. And it's it, whether you're using Facebook, Instagram, whether you're speaking, whether I'm coming on a podcast right now to tell my own story, this is, I forget, I'm, I've lost count now, but this might be podcast number 40 or 42 that I've been on just sharing my story, sharing my journey of being an entrepreneur. That's what it's about. It's just about choosing. I always say choose one platform and just share it over and over and over. You think people will get tired of it. The reality is we never get tired of old songs that we hear, right? Like we want to hear those old songs. We want to be singing them. I think the same way when someone becomes a raving fan of who you are and what you're about, they sit on the edge of their seat just to hear the story again because it's like, yeah, like that, it's such a great story, right? Like, so I think that's how we make sure we share our stories. And then you realize there's certain things that people connect with that you never expected them to. Like for a long time, I didn't share the story about Mrs. Donnelly handing me my first set of business cards until I realized people thought it was really unique and different. I knew it was, but I was like, do other people think that? Right. Until I started sharing it. And now I share it all the time. I, is, if there's a person I meet, I'm sharing that story. Um, along with the story of my car being repossessed. Now, after it happened, obviously, I wasn't sharing that story. But years later, as I started getting more opportunities to speak and I was sharing that story, I remember even my best friend saying to me, man, I don't think I ever knew that story. But I appreciate your journey so much more after that, after knowing that. And so, um, you know, last thing I'll say about that is, is uh, I've mentioned it before, the, the last dance with, with Michael Jordan. What happens, the power of storytelling, with him sharing his story after... 20 years sharing the journey of what it was like to build up that Chicago Bulls championship team. Um, A week after there was a pair of Air Jordans that sold in auction for $560,000. Yeah. And then Scotty Pippen, who was featured also in that documentary series, his teammate, um, I didn't even realize he was still selling products and memorabilia and shoes, but he saw his sales jump up 50% compared to the previous month. Right, that is uh, Scotty. Not, not oh, Scotty. Okay. Scotty Pippen. Yeah, yeah. Scotty Pippen did the same thing happened for Jordan, but I they, think I think because they they feel sorry for him man, for his contract. Well, that too, right? <laughs> we never. Knew, I didn't know that story. Yeah, like, I, I didn't. I didn't know that. I was I'm like a basketball man. fan, but I didn't know the the details behind him not getting paid what he should have been getting paid at the time. Like, so yeah, of course. But that's what happens when you tell your story. You're authentic about that. Like, can you imagine a basketball player talking about? Yeah, I'm not getting paid what I'm supposed to be getting paid. Like it's almost like you 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 almost there's a wall there where you think oh I'm going to look stupid if I tell people this. 
but it's just yeah. like you said, I didn't even think about that. You're right that maybe people felt sorry for him. They was like, well, let me go buy out whatever he has to sell. But again, that's the power of your story is like it, it, it gets people connected to you emotionally where they want to root for you. They want to see you win because of what they've seen you go through or what they've heard about you going through. Um, they want to see you win. Yeah, it's awesome right there. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, when when that came out, like the whole Scotty thing, I was like, are you serious? Like, you know, you, you could argue that, you know, without him, right? You know, that they don't win those six, right? So it's kind of like, whoa, okay. But, I mean, it was kind of kind of like how those things just come out, right? Yeah. Just I mean, simple it, things. It, it's not even, I, I don't even think it's an argument at that point that they couldn't win without him. Jordan wasn't winning until he had Pippen and, 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 uh, and uh, Rodman, like yeah. Jordan was not winning. He needed that team. He was a great player, but he wasn't winning championships and he needed the team to win the championship. So yeah, for sure. We can make that. It's not even an argument at that point. It's the truth. Like you couldn't win those games without him. But yet, unfortunately the man wasn't paid what he, but doesn't that speak to the Testament of like his love for the game that even though he wasn't being paid what he should be getting paid, he still was playing and winning championships for the team. Like, again, yeah. that's that's why storytelling is so powerful, because we each come to our own conclusion as to what this means for me as I'm yeah. listening to it. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm not telling you, hey, you should feel sorry for me because I didn't get paid what I was getting paid. That's not what he was saying. He was just telling you what happened. In this very specific moment in time, he was bringing you into what he was thinking and feeling, what he was seeing, the conversations that he was having. And then we got to experience it for ourselves and, and come to our own conclusions. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, when, when we go into that into that realm and kind of bring ourselves into the, into onto the stage, right? I feel like uh, you know, there's nothing else but to perform, right? We have to perform for the lights and uh, you know, with that, you know, what what is what is, you know, when Jude wakes up every morning, what 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 inspires Jude every day when he wakes up? <laughs> Ironically, what inspires me is storytelling. So I'm a lover of watching other documentaries. It's, I don't just do it like I really, I've had, a, I've had a passion for it. I read a lot of books as well, which obviously have stories in it. That's what gets me amped up, to be honest with you. Like, I just, understanding, like, especially, like, reading biographies of other entrepreneurs, um, what I take away from it is... It inspires me. It motivates me. It, it helps me see things in a new light that I wouldn't have seen it before. It gives me perspective. That's what amps me up every single day. That's why I love what I do. That's why I've stuck with it for 15 years. Um, it's it's just that. It's storytelling. Like I'm always interested in hearing other people's stories. Um, that's what gets me fired up every single day. And for you know up and coming filmmakers, any advice you any you, you want to share? I would say most importantly is study, study the art of filmmaking. Um, whether that's if you want to do documentary filmmaking or you want to tell um, scripted stories, uh, study it. What I did a lot in the early days was, and I still do it now every now and then, is um, sometimes I'll, I'll leave and watch a documentary without the sound on just to mm. experience what am I seeing and how does it make me feel. Now, of course, the whole entire thing will make you feel something, just the audio, the visual, the music, you know, the angles. But right. but I am studying it. So I'm, I'm, there's sometimes where I'm just only watching it. And then there's sometimes I'm only listening to it. Because then you pick up on certain things that you wouldn't have picked up on if you're experiencing the whole thing altogether. So that's the first thing. Study the art. Study the art. Um, put in the time to, to understand the craft. And then secondly, it would be do the work. Like it, it, studying is one thing, but you've got to actually apply what you're learning. Um, and it took years for me to get really good at what I was doing. Like even even when I filmed Keisha Dior's docuseries that she made millions of dollars from, I wasn't that great at, at, at it at the time. I understood certain elements of what I was doing, but I didn't have dramatic demonstration to prove or understanding of storytelling and why people loved watching her story. Um but I continued to work at it. And I, there were certain things I looked at that I was like, okay, here's why I think this works. Let me apply it again to another client. And then I applied it and it continued to apply it to where we are today. Um, so yeah, the first, first thing is study the craft. Second thing is actually apply the craft. I think the third thing is to share your story. It's not just about doing the work, but it's about who are you and how do you get other people to 
um, not only hire you, but like to help you win. Like we, we are human beings. Like we've seen it obviously with coronavirus, like they're not having that community, not having other people that we can talk to or rely on or get feedback from. Um, it hurt us a little bit, right? Like we wanted to have that human element. That's a human necessity to have community. Um, so share your work, share your work and tell others what you're doing, whether it's a, another filmmaking group or it's just your family, like opening up to your family and letting them get excited about your work too, so that they see why you're passionate about doing what you're doing. Um, that's my, that's my advice to other filmmakers, like study the craft, do the work, share your work. Um, and that is what will help you continue to grow. Well said, Jude. Well said. Now, if they want to watch any of your work or any of these docu series, where can they find it? Yeah. So, best place to connect with me and to see the work is judecharles.co. Also, this year I will be releasing a book on dramatic demonstration of proof, the behind the scenes of these of three projects that I did um, in two years, and it'll walk you through my process, walk you through uh, how you can do this for yourself judecharles.co that's the best place to connect with me perfect and i look forward to that book man awesome thank you for having me rodrigo it's it was definitely fun i'd, I'd love to come back as well and maybe we uh we break down a little bit of your story as well and, and show people how to apply um storytelling in a real way awesome i am down for that man i've learned so much man it's uh just even watching some of your stuff man i've kind of got some uh, you know opened my eyes a little bit on it. just you know just kind of relating, right, to human to human, right? And I feel like, you know, you brought that to life for the audience. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you for having me. All right, man. We'll catch you guys on the next one. See you guys next week. And don't forget to subscribe and check out the latest episodes on the website. Follow us on social media at Hardwood Rod. And don't forget, every Tuesday, we got the latest and greatest. So stay locked in. Would you like to be on the podcast? Got something to talk about? Make sure to head over to the website at hardwoodrod.com. Leave your name and the topic you'd like to discuss, and I'll add you to the calendar.